If you have been hearing about blockchain and don't know what it is, then this is the video for you. Blockchain is like a database where you can store digital information. For example, you can store photos, videos, online transactions, chat, or any information which can be done on a computer. So the question is, if you already have a traditional database where you can store information, then why blockchain? To answer this question, let's take a scenario without blockchain. We will take bank transactions example here. Whenever money is deposited or withdrawn from your bank, a transaction is created. And bank uses database software to store this transaction. And the balance sheet of the bank is updated based on the money deposited or withdrawn from your bank. As you can see, each transaction row here is independent of each other. Since these transactions are stored in database, and suppose some hacker or some corrupt employee gets access to this database and thereby changes the transaction. For example, let's say in this particular transaction, the withdrawal amount has been changed from 400 to 600, thereby updating the overall bank balance sheet. Sometimes it's difficult to know if the transaction has been hacked and the hacker might get away because every row here is independent of each other. Let's now see how blockchain will make it difficult for the hacker here. In blockchain, a block will contain data when I say data, it could be of any data. In our example, we are using bank transaction as data, but depending upon the use case, it could be of any data. And for this data, we need to generate a hash. Hash is like a fingerprint for data, which means for a data, when hash is generated, any change in data will generate a different hash. And apart from these two, we also need the previous block hash. So the data, the hash and the previous block hash all together will form a block in blockchain. For example, let's see how hash is generated and how change in data will result in change in hash. Let's say the data here is this is sample text and for this data, a hash is generated. Let's move this data and hash to left to compare with the right. Now the data on the left and right are equal. The data is this is sample text. Because the data is equal, the hash also matches. Now let's say the data is changed by adding more text to the data. As you can see, as I start adding more text to the data, the hash changes and the hash on the left does not match the hash on the right. But if we delete the extra text we have just added, the hashes on the left and right matches because the data is same both on left and right. So hash is dependent on data. Now let's generate a hash for this particular transaction. Any change to this transaction, for example, changing withdrawal amount or changing transaction data or changing anything on this particular data will generate a different hash. So we have computed hash for this particular data and let's assume this is the first ever transaction and there is no previous block. Because there's no previous block, there's no previous block hash. So let's say the previous block hash here would be zero. The data, the hash and the previous block hash all together will form a block in blockchain. Second transaction generate hash. Here we have a previous block. So let's add the hash of the first block as previous block hash to this block. Block 1 and 2 are now chained together. Second block is now dependent on the first block because of previous block hash linkage. Third transaction, generate hash, add previous block hash and these blocks are linked. Fourth transaction, generate hash, add previous block hash and this block is also linked to the previous block. As you can see, each block in a blockchain is linked together by the previous block hash. Now if the hacker changes the withdrawal amount from 400 to 1000, which means the data will change. Since the data changed, the hash of this data also changed. Because the hash of this block changed and the hash of the next block's previous block does not match the hash of this particular block, the chain will break. Since the chain breaks, all the blocks beyond the second block will not be part of this particular blockchain. So it is very difficult for the hacker to hack a particular block here because all the blocks are linked to each other, unlike the previous case where all the rows are independent of each other. Blockchain technology exists in a software and the software runs on a computer. Blockchain is distributed, which means a copy of blockchain is maintained in all the computers that are connected to each other, which are maintaining blockchain. Because blockchain is distributed, even if the hacker is able to hack one particular computer and modifies all the block in a particular computer, he will have to do the same in all the other computers, which is going to be extremely difficult. So far, we have seen a blockchain which had only one transaction in the data. But the data here can be one or many. In this particular example, we are going to include two transactions in a particular block. Now for this two transactions, we generate a hash. 
and link this particular block to the previous block hash. So we created a new block and this block contains two transactions. And since I said blockchain is distributed, which means a copy of blockchain is there in all the computers, because we have added a new block, now all the computers will also add this particular new block to their blockchain. A lot of cryptocurrencies are already using blockchain as a means of storage. But blockchain is not restricted to cryptocurrencies. It can be used for a wide range of applications. That's all about blockchain. If you like this video, please do subscribe to my channel. Thank you.